questions? Do you have the comments in your book as well, Rapid Cuba? Yeah, there's a chapter explaining like RPC, public subscribe, topics, and so on. Chapter 4, maybe. No, we can't start it. No, because it would be a bit too much for uh, this book. In terms of like, the server side, should, to get the most kind of performance out of obviously, <coughs> you probably want to go to the fire and forget mode. Is that kind of the most normal way to run it? Or, I mean, in terms of queuing our arts, it's quite effective anyway, even if you're using kind of acknowledgements and having the server waiting. Yeah, the. I'm excited from the point of view, just to give you more like around things like Mongo, and mm -hmm. that most, most people are using that to get them you know, really good performance, it's far to get, far to get. I mean, you so. can do that with Rabbit, and the problem, I think, in, I don't know, for what I read on, online on this Mongo architecture, mm -hmm. it's like you are constantly polling the server to see if there's new stuff, probably, like each, I don't know, what amount of time. And in the case of NQP or Rabbit, it will push the message as soon as there is a new message, but you're not bothering the server, like treating it like a database, so it would be more like event kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So then, yeah, if you do fire and forget, and you don't acknowledge the messages, that will be really fast, because actually in the Rabbit MQ code, it will do an optimization that says, okay, uh, this queue has a subscriber already, which is not acknowledging messages, so why should I write the, the message to the queue when I could deliver the message directly right away and if it's lost, not a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is what you are doing when you do no act. So that will happen. Then depending on, this, on the kind of message, if it's persistent or not, Travis will write the message to this. And depending there, if to which, uh, I mean, RabbitMQ underneath has two message stores. One is transient and the other is a persistent one. So the transient one, whenever RabbitMQ boots, this one is erased because you, there was a reason why you were, you were publishing messages in non-persistent mode. So yeah, why should the server care about that? So this is wiped out. Yeah, I think that's our day. Then you will, you will have like no hacking and like transient queues, and yeah. that's how you would try to get the most of, out of it. So people, people use it in, in production in a, in a variety of these places, or is it more prevalent in the fire? Do people use it more for the fire to get away, or do people use it? I think it doesn't matter. It depends on, on what you and do. Case, really, yeah. For example, in this computer, if you go to um, uh, Aki messages, you would drop to 4,000 a second. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Plus. Yeah. Yeah, for example, once I read a, a discussion from January this year about Twitter size or Twitter scale, and I remember the amount of messages. Of course, Twitter, for each tweet, we probably do a lot of processing. I'm not saying it's not the same uh, use case. But people say, ah, it's rabbit thank you Twitter scale, but 4,000 messages per second or 12 in this computer, you just do the math, it's like a billion messages per day or something. Mm -hmm. So it's still a lot. Yeah. Or the, I mean, the, always depending on your on your side. I know in Switzerland, the guy from from a bank, a, a, an investment bank, they use Rabbit. I know some guys that do book uh, betting online in, in the UK. The, by UK, I mean England. They they do they use Rabbit. Thank you for that. Then the guys from ETH, which is this university in Zurich, they use RabbitMQ for predicting earthquakes, and they're building a system all around that. Then NASA has its open star. BBC is using it for yeah. tweet processing, also that's a big flow. So I think there is, I, I believe it's fast enough. <laughs> so, uh, maybe some people that, uh, I have an Irish friend from, from from that part of the UK, who used to say that he's in the negative microsecond latencies. <laughs> so, but yeah, just a joke. So, any other question? Yeah. Yeah, so um, RabbitMQ is uh, broker based. So, while that is through a couple of between systems, it's still a separate server. Yeah. Um, another competing alternative to that is kind of a distributed messaging system where, say, you've got two sites that are connected by a, a weak network link. We might local, but the services might be on your end. 
the rubber cube have built in capability that for, for bridging. So if you wanted to write uh, to a cube for the services on a different site, you kind of write local, then it goes to the far site, get to be handled from OT, and then they will write local, and it comes back. Does the rubber cube have built in, or is that? No, so you, to do your you probably need to, write, to run a RabbitMQ on each of these machines. Yeah, you could yeah. do that, and we'll do all the sorry. queuing for you. But whenever you know the, the list, uh, I think you can uh, like from synchronize. From both, from both systems, they just see one service bus as it were. Both. You I mean, you can use, for example, clustering, but I don't think this is what you mean exactly. Yeah. And I think service bus and wireless service bus would be the alternative, but that's their distributed mechanism, so there's no central hub. Yeah. So there isn't a single point of failure or even cluster. Then, like, you can also, there is a plugin called Shovel for Rabbit. Yeah. So if you have separation, separating locations and in the network, you can send to one router and then messages will be routed to the other one. Right. You can do that and yeah, that's, that is, I guess most of the time you have to do stuff yourself. Right. So I think, for example, you can do it with 0MQ, but on 0MQ you don't have the, the real queuing, so if something crashes, poof. Yeah. Yeah. So you have super speed, but I, I think that in those cases, the best is always to mix solution. Yes. So like for some stuff, you use zero MQ, there is, there is a rabbit MQ plugin for that. So you can publish on a zero MQ socket and also get the messages on rabbit MQ and vice versa. So yeah, I will go for something mixed, but there is nothing I think in the server right now. And the messages persist with Yes. Like, is it persisting as it's uh, receiving the messages? Whenever the, the, you publish a persistent message on a durable queue, the protocol specifies that the message must be written to this queue. If then there is a fire and earthquake in Japan, <laughs> that of course goes out of the software or hardware contract. Yeah. <coughs> up to that point, you are sure it is there. So if you can get the server back up, you should be able to get the message. The best architect of that standard system and services in the same locality as not an engineer, why are they not the same lab? Sorry? You don't want to have a situation where they rub on cubes inside your London office and they're trying to want to get a cube from your New York office or the NCA. You know, um, it's when, when, they, when that guy says it goes down and you can't continue to write messages to your cubes. That's what I was asking about the distributed mechanism. You want to write local, but then yeah. Across the line and yeah, I think if you need to not lose any message, that's yeah. I mean, the other day I like, was telling Andrea, but I went to the CERN and they're also building like a huge computing grid and they are using that thing to do. And those are TVMQ and Apollo, there is a new one I heard about, which is a new TVMQ bridging on Scala. Um, yeah, they really need to, to have all this kind of write it here, send it, synchronize, and we were like discussing like six hours trying to see what is the best way to get that. So I don't think it's so simple to solve. Yeah. Well, well, generally, what do you think of the pluses out of if you, if you keep in mind the minuses of rather few compared to the other major open source message queues, some of which you've mentioned? I don't have that much experience with the others, so I would like to not comment about it. What do you think is, <laughs> for the selling points of RabbitMQ then? What do you think are its big advantages in the case? For me, or for disadvantages? What I know of is that the community is quite active, there is good documentation. Uh, for example, in the NQP library for Ruby, I know Michael was doing the, a great job adding more docs. I don't know there's more people involved. I know about Michael. And I think the, the developers they reply quite easily and fast in the in the mailing list, which is a plus. Like you, you are blocked with something and then you are not waiting a month till somebody tweets something. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, I mean the support in the community I think is good, then the server is reliable. I I mean unless you you do something for example if you overwhelm the message the server with messages, but really that like, you overwhelm it. Every system will crash, or, or crash, or, or, or slow down, or I don't know. 
So, but if you, but at that point you have a capacity problem, plan, a capacity planning problem. So maybe you you need two servers, which will happen with MySQL, will happen with whatever with Apache, nginx. I mean. So if you plan that, I mean, in, for this website in in, in this data inside we were using, it. we the only way, I mean, we shut it down when we did the update, but not. Not because it crashed or, or something like that. Uh, if I may also, I think uh, Reddit and Google has realized a lot of plugins, so that's definitely an important reason for me. And uh, like for example, there's management plugins, so you can see how many messages uh, you have, how many queues, and so on. And uh, also, it's uh, going to be supported uh, on Heroku and uh, Cloud Foundry, actually it's already supported on Cloud Foundry and it's on, I think, uh, beta on uh, Heroku now. And the, the, the plugins that for that kind of reason that sets you apart from other queuing systems probably, yeah. the, With the number of plugins. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah there's like yeah. real so many plugins, I don't think. Yeah. 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 yeah, for example, the Stomp, this other protocol, which is m way simpler than, than NQP, but I mean, it's simpler and the concept, but at the end, you, you end up reinventing NQP because mm. you need to have a destination, you need to have <coughs> acknowledgement, you need to, I mean, mm. there are stuff that at the end you will build on top of Stomp. Mm. Anyway, Stomp is not, was not supported by default on Rabbit, and then there was a plugin, which is, now you can have a stomp on, on, on the server. Then I know there are the, the JSON RPC server, so I think you can publish messages using JSON and some REST interface. And I mean, it's, if you know Erlang, it's really easy to extend. And for example, the, yeah, it's a big if, but the, the, exchange, the exchange API is to implement like four or five methods. It's really, really simple. And Erlang is very successful. I think is the word. So, for example, to to route the messages differently, you just you implement everything as default in this interface. But the route function, you do something that you may want to do, and that will be a basic reading of that line. It's what you will get uh, running. For example, I wrote a sample chat application for Rabbit, where each client, each user, had had a, its own private queue, and the problem in a chat system is that when you connect to the system, you want to get the, uh, some context of what's going on, like the last 20 messages or something. Mm -hmm. RabbitNQ doesn't support that, because every time a message arrives to the queue and it goes to a consumer, it's, it's gone. There is no... So I added a, an exchange, which was called Recent History Exchange, which kept in memory a list of 20 messages, like a circular stuff. So. Every time there was a new message, it was added to this list, and, and the last one was dropped, and so on. And whenever there was a new binding, it meant there was a new user arrived to the system. So I did the binding, and then sent all this list to, that, uh, to the queue of that user, so the user got the context. And that was I mean, really nothing to, to implement. And you can have your own queues, you can have your own authentication method. So if you are not happy with uh, no SAS or support or whatever, you can have your own way based on your user database list or whatnot. So yeah, I think the plan is a big win. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. So that's an enterprise, an enterprise situation. Things always have to be integrated. So you, you often want to plug into a whole bunch of systems and sort of compute things off and then plug in as well to join into the ones. It's quite useful for a business. Or it's trying to integrate a lot of things. Like the, the wiretap one was interesting where you can keep an eye on the queue as the queuing message, the queuing messages are going through. Like, so do, do you find with, with an open source product like that, do you, obviously a lot of your people you're talking to are enterprise based, do, do you find that a lot of people are kind of big like businesses and, and companies, or do you find people doing you know, smaller open source projects using it more, or is it a mix, or do you find one, one more than the other? I mean, first I don't work with the right thank you guys to know that much, so... Oh, okay. But I, I've seen, yeah, 
It's used, I think it's used everywhere. Oh, probably, yeah, maybe in the open source world when you need a queue system, you just go right away from Rabbit. Mm -hmm. And maybe like in a big corporate, I, I don't know if you can just say Rabbit MQ. But for example, Apple last week was looking for Rabbit MQ. Yeah. So they were there. I, I know that they want to give this system to log everything through a, a message broker. And the description asks for Rabbit MQ script. Mm -hmm. so, we are there for a message broker called Neural, Neural ESV. It's uh, $25,000 per core per CPU. It's a <laughs> queue from an enterprise level with a lot of features. Mm. There is just mm. a sudden massive jump to tip code in Neural ESV where you can't pass the price you can't afford. It's simply as that. So um, with the magic features you get this, it's, uh, mm. it's, it's near enough. Yeah. Yeah. It's near enough. It's a bit cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> so two questions for you first. One is the uh, scalability. If you want to really have like, you know, like send a lot of messages to the work you want to the cluster or something, right? So how would you handle it? If you have a lot of class, a lot of consumers, then you want to have machines to, to handle it. And second, sort of of fact, you know, what's the uh, high availability of failover state? Is there like a simple way to achieve like you know the some sort of send your message to a broker and um, you have like you, you have guarantees that you don't do it even if you know, like you know the most impossible phase or some sort of things. So let me yeah. What we used to do in this dating site, for example, was to have two rabbit entries. And then on front, there was a, a Linux virtual server, which so all the producers were sending messages there. And then the messages got distributed randomly, of course. And then we had, uh, for QA, right, there was uh, two consumers, one connected di directly to each of, of those servers. So in that way, we achieved the, the, what happened if some rabbit engine crashes or is down, or I don't know what. So that's not actually clustering, but it was what we do it, what we did, and what was enough for all requirements. Then, RabbitMQ support clustering in the Erlang sense of clustering. So that is made mostly for 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 supporting many users, but not for uh, high availability. So in the case of RabbitMQ, the the messages, as I said, are persisted to this based on this uh, custom database that RabbitMQ has. But the queue information, like the meta information of the queue, like the name and so on, the exchange information and the bindings are all kept in Nisha, which is the seven database, which supports clustering by default. So all this information is distributed on, the, on this cluster, and then all these servers are, are treated as one. Then on the RabbitMQ website, there is a description of how to do HA using the RBD, which I, I don't have experience with that. And of course, there you would trade speed for reliability and so on. But and now, since the late, latest release, there is the mirror queues. So when you declare a queue, you say that this queue has mirrors in the certain cluster. And, when, and even if there is, let's say, you say, will be in node 20, but not node 20 is not available yet. Whenever node 20 comes up, the server will take care that a queue get mirrored there, and it will handle the responsibility for, for this queue. So that is what I know of. Maybe the, there is more, or people should doing other stuff. I don't know. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, yeah. oh, she reminded me. We, the guy from RabbitMQ kindly gave us the t shirts. So I guess I don't know how we can give them away because we don't have enough. But maybe you can find the cooling bath here. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> or while you drink beer, we can uh, take the each bar's name and, and then do kind of a raffle. And I can't believe you've actually wanted the invitation to make some sort of queuing joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> 
So yeah, we have t-shirts and I can show you. So you get this, <laughs> this one. So maybe uh, while you drink beer, we decide. And then the guy from Manning also say they have a one free ebook of this like thank you in action book. And once it's published, you can get access to the EPUB format and whatever online version format they are using. Finally, in this video, I have some videos, tutorials, how to create plugins and stuff for like thank you. And <coughs> the slides are many versions of the conference, many versions of other conferences I have here. Yeah, you can find them. So, thanks. Oh, by the way, I have some stickers, so if you want some <laughs> rather than <laughs> stickers, feel free to get some.